Good morning. Welcome to the Vineyard Church. We're so glad to hear that you're here with us this morning. We just want to invite you to worship. You can stand, you can sit down, whatever, but we, we've come to worship our King. I was born a slave to sin, but now my soul's been born again. I'm saved by faith in the Son of God, saved by grace through the Savior's blood. I was born a slave to sin, but now my soul's been born again. I'm Saved by faith in the Son of God, saved by grace through the Savior's blood. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and this world can't take it away. I lay down my burdens and shame, praise your name. I was born a slave to sin. Soul's been born again. I'm saved by faith in the Son of God. Saved by grace through the Savior's blood. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and this world can't take it away. I lay down my burdens and shame. Praise your name. From the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun. To the place where it goes down, I will praise your name. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and this world can't take it away. Lay down my burdens and shame and praise your name. Joy, joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this world can't take it away. I lay down my burdens and shame and praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Well, it's good to have you with us here this morning. In the seat there in front of you, we have what we call our Connect Cards. If you're a visitor with us, we would love for you to fill this out. This just helps us to know that you are here with us. And if you'd like for us to stay in contact with you when you leave here today, we'll be glad to send you a nice little gift in the mail. But we want to know that you are here. We'd like to kind of get an idea of what you think about us and so uh, so please fill this out. And if you're a regular around here, we also have a section down here for the next steps. If you'd like to know more about the church, if you'd like to know more about the vineyard, if you'd just like to know what we do around here, fill that out, okay? So glad to have you here with us this morning. There's communion that's set up on the sides here. If you'd like to take communion with your family or individually, however you'd like to do that, you can do that during the, the, the worship part of this service. And we just want you to feel at home and, and just enter in and, and worship our King. Amen. We're going to play a little more. <laughs> Every day I will see 
take us to the pastures that are green. Leave beside still waters, bring refreshing to our souls. As you guide us in the past, the make us. I love that psalm. I love the psalms of David. I've said this before. Because they're just so real. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read through the psalms of David, that guy didn't hold anything back. <laughs> you know? He said, sometimes my life really stinks. My enemies are coming up against me. Everybody's trying to take my life. People are surrounding me. Death, darkness, sorrow, pain but it's not gonna reach this part because I know you're my God, you're with me, you're with me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. My cup runs over because of you, Lord. I love it, I love it. We were talking last night a little bit about worship and how in worship, whether that's, you know, in singing or in reading the psalms or in whatever it is that we're doing as worship and as honor with to the Lord, that it's an opportunity for us to connect with the Lord, to come to him, to open our hearts, to be intimate with him. And um, that's what this next song is talking about. You know, sometimes it's hard for us as we get a little bit older to let our inhibitions down, kind of let ourselves just come to the Lord with nothing, no expectation, just, you know, like little kids, the way they run around and just, they don't care. They don't know what they're, you know, bumping into things and people and they don't care. They're just there. They're just them. And, and that's one of the things I love about this song, you know, talking about is coming to the Lord as children. No, no expectations, no inhibitions, just, just us and God. So let's continue in worship to the Lord. As children we come with arms open wide I'm so desperate for you so in need of your life May your praise fill your ears May your cries touch your heart Cause we your presence to change who we are. So we Like the way. 
Spirit, we, we sense you drawing near to us. And we know what your word says about being in our midst where just two or three gather in your name. And as I look around this room, there's so many more than two or three. And we know, Lord, that you are here and you want us to, to feel your love for us. You want us to feel your desire us to know you in a fresh 
in a very real way. So we ask you to come. Come, Holy Spirit. If you're here this morning and you you need a touch in your body, and maybe the doctors have given you little or no hope of getting better, there's one who I know who can, who can heal. I know one who can deliver you from those things that you feel like you can't be delivered from. And if there's anything you can take away from this service this morning, it's that God loves you. And he wants you to draw near to him. And it just takes that one step moving closer to him draw near to me I will draw near to you is what scripture says God's just waiting for us to take that first step maybe you're scared and you you just I don't know what, what to do with what I'm feeling right now I, I'm, we're just gonna we've got one more song and we're gonna just ask the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and just to continue moving and if you're in a place where you feel like that you need some help we, we're 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 going to give you an opportunity to respond later. Just don't run anywhere. Don't go away. Because you're in the right place. We come to offer you hope. We come to offer the answer. So we bless your name, Lord. We thank you. Draw near to us. And grab a hold of our hearts this morning. Don't let us... Ignore what we're feeling. Don't let us just, just kind of push it off, Lord. Let us draw near to you today. That's the whole purpose that we came here. We bless your name. And I feel love. And I feel safe. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel the warmth within me I can't describe it but I believe and I feel
to the vineyard. Uh, it's good to see you all, uh, visitors and the regular attenders alike, and also those of you who may be watching on the internet. Uh, welcome this morning. So, uh, wow, it's good to see everybody here. It's amazing what a baby dedication will do for your numbers. <laughs> so, Amber and Lane, we appreciate you um, bringing so many family and, and friends. It's great to have you here. So I want to thank uh, Joel and, and the band, and uh, Scott and Robert. Thank you very much. Well, let's pray. Father, we worship you with gladness and come before you with joyful song as we sing glory to the King. Come, Holy Spirit, and reign in our lives. We just ask that you make a difference, make us to each to be a difference in our neighborhood, in the state, in our country, in the world. And Father, we just uh, remember this morning those who need your healing touch. And uh, think of Kristen Stegan's dad who is suffering and, and struggling right now. And we just pray that you would uh, reach down and touch his body and his heart and his lungs and, and just uh, return him to normal health and allow him to come home soon. And Father, we just pray for the, the activities of the service this morning that uh, you would be blessed and we'd be blessed in, in every activity, including the, the, the message that Villard will bring. And we just ask that you speak through him and for the baby dedication and for the other activities. We just pray that your hand will be upon each of them. We ask these things in your name. Amen. So um, last night we had a, a good night of worship at Second Saturday, but... One thing was missing, many of you. <laughs> so, you know, take two hours out of your month, because this happens once a month only, and uh, take two hours out and join us for Second Saturday. Now, I'm not sure what the Second Saturday is in May, but uh, it'll be announced, and please be here. Uh, and then ministry training starts on April 20th uh, with Villard and Lynette teaching. Uh, it's going to be at our, our house. So Debbie and I are going to be in the training, too. 
Um, but that starts on April 20th. So there's a sign-up that you can sign up for this uh, training if you uh, would like to participate with us. It's a 10-week uh, training session, and uh, we look forward to seeing those of you who want to join us. And then Vineyard 101 is coming up uh, the April 24th. And again, that's a sign-up in the back. But if you want to learn more about the Vineyard, um, please uh, sign up and you can join us for that. And uh, the location will be given to you, but it will be right after the service on the 24th. So now uh, Eric and the ushers, we're going to collect, uh, receive the offering. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for how you bless each one of us, and uh, we just ask that you bless each one here um, in all aspects of their lives, including financially and spiritually. And we just uh, pray that you would take this offering and use it for your work, expanding your kingdom. We ask these things in your name. Amen. So, um, the Connect card that Joel mentioned, that's right in the seat in front of you, if you didn't have a chance to fill that out before the offering is being received, um, you can always drop it in the box in the back or in the foyer as you, as you leave. So um, if you haven't had a chance to fill it out, there's still time to do it. And then uh, now we're going to have a little uh, clip on the community groups, and then John is going to come up and talk about the community groups. There are, some there are some things in life that you can't do alone, like play ping pong. Give yourself a root canal. Be stuck in a traffic jam. Are you serious? Come on! Perform a flash mob. Have a sack race. Go on a lunch Come date. On. Trust fall. Okay, here I go. Falling. Some things in life just don't work without the help of others. Your spiritual journey is one of them. When it comes to that, we're much better together. Good morning. I'm happy to see everybody here this morning. We got a good group. Thank you, Lane and Amber. Who happened to be in our community group, by the way. They make a big improvement to our group. Um, this week is Promo Sunday. Next week is Sign Up Sunday. Um, we do have a couple of leaders that are going to be taking a session off, so there, there's going to be some groups moving around. As Mel indicated, Mel and Debbie are going to be attending or hosting the uh, training, ministry training, so their group will be either going to the ministry training or finding a new group. And then my mom and dad's group is going to take a session off, and they're going to be, some of them are going to be joining us. And we're going to be doing the Book of Acts at uh, Brad and Tammy DeBrennan's house. And we still have the discipleship group that uh, the Ultimate Journey that the Dickinsons are doing. So if you are interested in that, you can reach out to them. Um, the Supremes have a Friday night group in Belleville. And <coughs> we have men's breakfast on Thursday mornings. There's a women's Bible study uh, that still has a few sessions left. Anna is hosting a Friday night group. Um, and I need to get with the Stagants because they're sort of in flux right now uh, to find out what's going on with them. But uh, we're happy to have everybody here. Next week we'll have all the growth group leaders, our community group leaders up here so that they can talk about what night and what their group's going to be covering. But we look forward to seeing everybody. And there's going to be a new catalog in the back um, next week that you can see what night everybody meets and what their topic is. So everybody, thank you for coming. Amanda Clark, if you'll come up, and Anna Safutra, and uh, I guess you can bring your grandbaby, but uh, <laughs> I don't have a choice. Okay, there, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're all excited about our church leadership. We really have some neat leaders, and uh, sometimes there's transitions that go on, but it's not a matter of... Uh, not doing good jobs, it's a matter of people doing different things at different times, like taking off from these community groups for a, for a se uh, semester, 
And so uh, Amanda is overseeing our education, and she's going to be uh, working in the area that Ann was working uh, for a while. So there's a transition going on. So if you want to know anything about our kids, you can still talk to Ann Laputra or you can talk to Amanda. But gradually, you should talk to Amanda. But I'm going to let Amanda just say a word, and then we're going to have just a word of prayer over this transition. Okay, say a word. Two, maybe. I wanted to say two logistical things because we have a lot of guests of little ones. Um, we will be taking all the kids back, if you prefer, to do children's church after the baby dedication. And for those parents who attend regularly and are interested, hang around for a little bit after service and come and meet with me. And I also wanted to say, um, I've been working with Anna for a few years, and her and I are pretty good friends. And um, she's set up a really fabulous children's ministry in the back. We, um, she's been teaching our kids how to worship, and they're learning to worship, and they're learning to minister to one another, which is so fantastic because Lynette and Villard are going to be teaching some of our grown-ups how to minister. Um, so we can take a cue from some of our kids and yeah, the kids can help. I really think so. So um, we're really teaching the kids about the Bible and they're getting their hands on the Bible and they're learning to navigate the Bible. Um, you know, it's great. We can search things on our apps and that's great for us to be able to do, but you really can't take away that, that, you know, hands-on approach. And uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about in the back today is about healing and how the Bible is our first aid kit. So I think that that's really kind of been something that's been set up for us. And, and uh, so I just appreciate all the work that she's done um, as I tried my best to transition and keep what she's set up. Amen. Amen. Now. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that, Amanda. Um, I've been here, the children's director, for about three years. Ah, uh, yeah, every bit of three, yeah. I, uh, I lose count, it's been so long. <laughs> and I want to thank you for trusting me with that position and entrusting me your kids. Higher up? Yeah, there okay. you go. <laughs> yeah. um, it has been a fabulous time. I've loved every second of it. And I just love these kids that are in this church. Um, when I first started, I decided that I would never be up here and beg for help because somehow in children's ministry it is a given that um, there's never enough people to help and so I want to take this opportunity <laughs> I'm not <to> about begging. <laughs> <laughs> because now I do not have an agenda anymore <laughs> I want to submit to you that it takes a village to, to raise a child and um, too often we have the attitude that we can send our children to the back and there will be somebody taking care of them. And um, I don't think it's gonna fly anymore, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think each one of you has a responsibility to take care of the children in this church. And they are not just children. They are the, f the church of the future. And I was just reading um, a research uh, by Pew Research that currently the younger millennials, the people that have been born in 1990 through 1996, 99. 80 to 96. No, 90 no, to 90 96. To, okay. um, only 19% of these people still believe in God. And more and more people decide that they are non-religious, that they are atheists. And to be honest with you, the public school is not helping. So the only time that we have is probably the hour that the kids are back here every week to teach them the word of God, to teach them a relationship with God, and to teach them worship. And so, I don't know, sometimes I hear people say, when I ask them, well, I really don't feel like, you know, I'm called to work with children. And I really want to submit to you that it's not a matter of feeling anymore. It's an urgency. And each one of you has a responsibility for the children in this church to raise them up. The Bible says to raise up your children in the fear of the Lord. And everybody has a responsibility. We cannot just expect Amanda to do it all or some of the other people to do it all. Um, when I first started here, there was only one retired teacher who was basically doing everything. And I think we need to change that, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Amen. So yeah. I'm not officially the children's director anymore, but I'm not going to... 
let Amanda hang it, hang. You're <laughs> you know, you're I'm gonna I'm, be there. Okay. I'm gonna be there. So, and I want to encourage y'all to be there too. Okay. And what's right, your grandbaby's you. name? Uh, this is Freya Kara, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but she's already learning how to worship. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise okay. God. Thank y'all so much. And I want to now just pray for y'all. If you just come in a little closer, Don, Joan, would you just slip up here right quick? Kurt, are you here? Yeah. Diane, slip up here. Uh, thank you, Lord. We take, uh, we take leadership very serious because we believe so much in leadership uh, that God puts a burden on people's hearts, and we're kind of driven by that burden. It's the bigger yes in our life. And Lord, today we, we thank you uh, for our inheritance of leaders that have led in the past. We thank you for the last three years with uh, Anna uh, and all that she's done and those that have helped her accomplish the mission. And Lord, we just ask that your leadership and your mantle of authority to take over and guide in the children in the education area. We just bless Amanda as she does that, and we give you the praise for it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you agree with that, let's just give God a big hand clap. I want you to get involved because you're important to back our leaders and uh, be with them. Uh, if y'all could bring me up on the screen, I, uh, I would like to have that picture up there. And uh, Amber and Lane, if you will, oh, you're right there. I didn't see y'all. I was scanning the crowd. Uh, if y'all want to come on up, I'm excited now. Oh, Luke looks like uh, he's a normal church member. Yeah. Luke has got in on this thing. Now, any of you that are parents, uh, grandparents, family friends. Uh, family, friends, if you want to come up and join this, it's kind of a quick thing, but we love to see the family. So just come on up and... Or friends, if they've come here to be Yeah, welcome. if you're a friend. Uh, we don't, we're not taking your pictures. Well, we actually are, but... Uh, <laughs> yes, nice little family. Yeah, and this is the, y'all are known as that kind of the, the godfather of parents, uh, yeah? Uh, congratulations that, that you have been blessed with that authority. So you can speak into their life any time from now on. Okay. Well, very, very good looking group, don't you think? I, I think it's a very good looking group. And Luke, I don't know if you know it, Luke, but you're the star of this show right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, you are the star of the show. And don't it, this is the only time when people don't feel all this pride. They're just normal, you know. Luke says, I don't care about all these people just as long as they feed me and give me what I want and do what I tell them, and that's good. Well, here's his first Bible with his name, and I know that... Uh, uh, You'll be getting right on that thing, won't you? Uh, and uh, I find that babies put Bibles to good uses. <laughs> Can I hold you, Lou? I tried this last week, you notice, and I didn't do very well with, with the baby. I think it was because you never asked to hold a two-year-old. Uh, not very smart. Not very smart. Well, what do you think? Did, did Lane and Amber do a good job? Yes. Okay. Well, Lord, we thank you so much for Luke. And uh, I, what was the scripture you had on the screen? Uh, I'm a child, child of God. Great. I, and next time we have a baby, you always got to send me a picture like this. I like that. And Luke, we're, we're dedicating you back to the Lord. Not because we don't feel responsibility and we want to be parents and we want to be a part of your Luke, uh, part of your life, Luke, all the way, but... Lord, we dedicate him to you. We give him to you. You love the little children. You loved them. You saw such a future in them. And Lord, thank you for godly parents that have babies. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I pray especially. Give Luke back to you, Amber. Man, he is a good baby. He didn't cry at all. And they do that a lot when they look at me. And Lord, I dedicate Lane and Amber to you too. 
Lord, thank you for giving them this incredible desire to have children. And Lord, they're so dedicated now to raise Luke and guide and direct that he will be able to grow up and know everything about you and the kingdom of God and live life to its fullest and be with us all in eternity. And Lord, we pray for guidance, strength, energy, patience, wisdom, understanding from now until little Luke leaves home and then for years past that. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all so much for coming. We've got to get a professional photographer and uh, then we can sell the prints and make money and it would just be great. God bless you all. Thank you for coming today. Y'all have a good day. Amen. Those are always special times in the church, and uh, uh, we're just glad that we get to be a part of that. And while they're finding their way back, let me use this time to just encourage you. Uh, you may think we talk about these Connect cards a whole lot. Well, you're exactly right. They are so important to us because if you're a first-time visitor, we, we want you to have that free book in the back. And we want to send you a thank you for coming. Because if you're a guest at this church, we don't call you visitors, we call you guests. You're, you're so important. And when, when somebody comes to our church, we want them to feel that we care enough about them. We want to do our best to minister and love and guide and direct and facilitate uh, everything that God wants to do in your life. It's a responsibility to us. And we feel so strongly about it. And uh, if you give us all of that, but then next steps, and our people fill those out, check them, we appreciate that. Drop them in those boxes at the back. But your prayer requests are so important to us. Uh, we take the major part of our business meeting on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, I'm sorry, just praying for, for prayer requests. And they're getting more and more because you're starting to actually trust us, I think. And we need to start probably finding out if, if something has changed. Since we prayed, give us reports, and that, that'll just boost us on as we pray. And then other people meet right before church, and they'll be praying for some of those areas too. You know, in our lives, we, we need to be challenged to grow. Have you noticed that? I don't care. In whatever field it's in, we need to be challenged to grow. And when we talk about Launch 16, which is something for this whole year, and in your packet, all of you got one of these, uh, you should have got one of the Launch 16. This is not about the speaker. This is about the ongoing launching. And actually, when I close today, I'm supposed to remember to do this. If I don't, I'll do it now. Pick up one of these bands in the back because they stretch. And if you're going to follow Jesus in Launch 16, that means launching the church into the world. We've been in the church way too long. Have you noticed that? It's too comfortable in here, you know. You need stretching, and that's when you do it. You do it out there, loving people. And, and Lynette, she's helping me teach this course on helping people help people, which is ministry training. And uh, she's trying to, do, to testify and pray for 200 people. She's got three done. Hey, that's not bad, is it? How many of you can say since launch 16, I've prayed for three people? Hey, the, the list goes down, doesn't it? It is a challenge because, see, people out there really need to hear about Jesus. And I'm just praying God will give us more and more opportunities. And if you have an opportunity to pray with somebody, testify to someone, let us know. We'd like to hear that testimony. good place to do that is go more to McDonald's. I'm not kidding you. At McDonald's, you know why people are more? Many times, the people at McDonald's are more open to hear the gospel than they are at Chili's. I'm not kidding you. Go more to, to Starbucks. Great cup of coffee, and then start talking to somebody. I've seen salesmen go after people at Starbucks, and I thought, wow, if there were only a salesman for Jesus Christ. So I just encourage you, launch. Get out of the church. Do something for somebody. It may be simple. You know, like when you're pulling, when, when somebody's trying to get on the freeway, merge into 290, give them room, especially if they've got a gun rack in the pickup. But give them room. Let them come on in. See, the little things are so important, so important. We have what we call the golden, golden rule. You know about that. 
and uh, I don't really agree with that major theologian, uh, Mr. T, because he said the golden rule, he believed in it. It's whoever has the most gold rules. And so uh, that may not be the best theology, but yet there is a golden rule, and it is to reach out and touch people, and I'm talking about that today, what I call the one thing, and that is love. Last week I dealt with uh, the subject of share, uh, serving, and I think this here is actually telling you if you're going to serve, you're probably going to need to understand what this is. And we're doing it around that area of, uh, you know, City Slicker movie with his glove on, black gloves. He says, this is what life is all about. And, of course, the city slicker says, your finger? He says, no, one thing. What is the one thing? That is for you to find out. Well, that's kind of what I'm trying to say to you. You have really got to find out what this one thing is called love. It's not really what you think it is. It's not as easy as what you think it is. Love is an incredible, challenging concept. How many of you find it very easy to love people for a long time? And you've been married for more than three days. I don't know about you, but I find loving people for a long time. <clears throat> and one of my philosophies, if I have one, is to go the same direction for a long time. Now, that's kind of my philosophy. That, that's to believe you're going the right way. Because I know people go in the same direction for a long time, and they need to change direction. But my philosophy is trying to go the right way for a long time. Uh, where was I at? I forgot. It doesn't matter. Going the right and the wrong way? That wasn't where I was going. But what's that? There you go. Love people for a long time. <clears throat> I still don't remember where it's at. <laughs> that was such a good thought, too. I could just see it happening. You know what I mean? It was just happening. Uh, I love seeing people change. I, I do. I love seeing people over a period of a long time change directions. So, sometimes when, when we're singing those songs, I get that feeling of just like, God, I love seeing people change. I love seeing them grow. I love seeing them make decisions and go right directions i i love to watch people and and see if i can help them make the right decision i love to be a part of that i was following a guy the other day uh, walking down the sidewalk and uh his shirt was tucked in the back uh don't get the wrong picture there i mean he was tucked in the back of his britches here you know and i i was watching him as i walked along and you know somehow inside of me <clears throat> i just kind of wanted to go up and pull it out you know what i mean and so I'm kind of walking behind him and kind of, you know, you're kind of thinking about it. Like, would I dare just go up and pull that out or get hit? Uh, would it be wise? <laughs> you know, I decided just to let him figure that out and decided it wasn't wise to do that. I find helping people, you have to use wisdom. You can't always help people immediately change their direction. But you can start thinking about Lord, would you help them know their shirt is tucked in and help them to figure out what they need to do in their life? Every one of you are going through life and you need to understand, figure out what this word love means to you. It is a huge word. It's a life-changing word because it can only happen inside of you. It's huge. It's not what America calls it. It's a huge word. And I'm going to give you actually two people that you can kind of figure out um, if you're one of them. One of them is, is Judas. Uh, totally messed up. Had every chance. Blew it. Then the other was Peter. Peter messed up. Made a lot of mistakes. Figured it out. Came clean. Changed his life went on, became a great apostle for Jesus Christ. Which one are you? <clears throat> not many of us name our kids Judases anymore. That's just not a word I've ever had at baby dedication yet. 
And when I do, I'm going to have to ask, why did you pick that name? I would say they probably aren't biblical scholars. Because, you know, that's a word we just don't put on our kids, Judas. But Judas was a real person in history. Had a great chance. He just blew it. Who are you? Kind of, where are you at in your life? This scripture starts with, I'm not, uh, it starts with, I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Jesus is getting ready to do something in real time, real life. And he's actually going to be able to show the disciples in real life what it means, that one thing. He's going to show them what it means. He's not just going to tell them something. He's going to show them something and hoping they catch on. Now that scripture is Psalms 41. I'm going to, I haven't got it on the overhead, but I'm going to read that to you. Even my best friend. So when Jesus quoted this scripture, he was saying, even Judas, you're my best friend. The one I trusted completely. He was in charge of the finances. The one who shared my food day after day, week after week, month after month, over three and a half years, has turned against me. And he is going to show you how much he loves this man, how much he cared for him. See, Judas was the same guy that now he's betraying, but he was the same guy that Jesus sent out and healed the sick. He was the same guy that went out and actually broke demonic power off of people's lives. Broke demonic power. Set drug addicts free, you might say. He did it. Something we haven't done much of. It says he is a part of the 12 who raised the dead. Now, that, that's a pretty good story, wouldn't you say? To come back and say, hey, Jesus, the demons obeyed, the dead were raised, the sick were healed, and it says Jesus was so excited for all of them one of the 12 but something had not happened in judas's life is this possible to be so much in the church and yet not be really the church is that possible let me give you a scripture that john wrote at the first of his book chapter 1 verse 12 i think i have that one it says as many as received him that's who Jesus, to them gave he power, those that received him, opened their heart, believed, to them he did what? He gave them power to become the sons of God. Somewhere along the way, Judas never had received Jesus Christ. He had never received him fully as the Messiah, the Son of God, God's only son. Somewhere it had not clicked. I, I don't know. I, I never want to judge people. But it is so important that you know that you believe that Jesus Christ died for you. It's got to click, you know. You know when it clicks. It's not up here. It clicks. You, yes. You know it. It's not because you paid some money in the offering. It's not because you attend church every Sunday. It's not because you got baptized. It's not because you joined a church. It's not because you took money to some place this last week, I mean, a food, and helped somebody. It's not because you stopped and fixed somebody's flat. All of those are part of it. But listen, you know when it's clicked right here, you know that you know. Because, see, it's only Jesus that makes you a child of God. It's when he comes in, he's the one that changes your life. Here's what God told me at the beginning of this series. And I, I am not a very good God hearer at times. I you know he has to hit me, kick me, pull on my arm, do a lot of things. But finally I hear him. But I think with all my heart, two Sundays ago, standing here worshiping with, that, with our band, I felt like I heard God said, the people of this church need an experience that will overwhelm them. It will be the bigger yes. It'll be such a big yes, a, such an experience, that it will take them out of this church and put them into the lives of people 
it will change their lives now how will that ever happen as received him do you receive Jesus Christ this morning as your Lord and Savior? You can do it while you're sitting there. You can do it on the way out. You can do it in your car. You can do it anywhere, but you have to receive Jesus into your heart. And that means with all of your heart, you're saying, come into my life, Lord Jesus. I accept you for my sins. I give you authority in my life. Come into my life. And then he comes in and he begins to change you. He gives you power to become the sons and daughter of God. So really you don't get much credit for this, but somewhere in that life, in Judas's life, that had not happened. He was a part of the church, you might say. He was a part of the beginning, but it had never happened. So it's, it's kind of a scary thing sometimes for people to be fooled. That's why we try to tell you very clearly. We don't try to be political around here. We don't try to say, oh, please come to church. And man, you're just great. You're wonderful. I mean, you're just great. See, what that's really saying is give us all the money you can. Come make our numbers swell. No, what we're saying, go to heaven at all costs. Find Jesus Christ. And if God leads you here, this is where you ought to be. But if not, go serve Jesus wherever he takes you. Now, let's look a little further into the case of Judas. Now, remember, the bottom line today is what? Love one another. Who, who is Jesus loving right now? The guy that has lifted up his heel against him. The guy that has sold him down the river. The guy that in his heart is making a decision to sell him, to get him crucified for 30 pieces of silver. And that is very small compared to what he's doing. Bottom line, Jesus is loving Judas with all he has. Now that's something for you to think about right there. It might be very easy to love Peter, but it might be very hard to love Judas. But, but Jesus is saying, I love him. Now after he had said this, the scripture goes on, it says he was troubled in his spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. Troubled in spirit actually means, uh, if you were, it was, he was very agitated, very upset. Have you ever been in a situation, you're getting ready to go into a situation, you may be going to have to let somebody go in a business, or, but you become very agitated because you're kind of afraid how it's going to be taken or what's going to happen. Well, the Son of God is saying, love one another. He's doing this. He's going to tell them to do that. And he's looking at this man he loves and actually Judas, according to this scripture, he loved Judas probably as much or more than anybody in the group, or he had done more to make his love known to, to, to Judas. And so here he is, and he says, I'm very troubled. You know why? Because a lot has gone on, but it's come down to this point. And at this point, he's got to reveal the heart of Judas. That's always a hard thing. It's a, always a hard thing when you... You, you, you put up, you put up, you go along, you go along, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, I, I've got to deal with this. I've got to deal with it. And he says to them, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. <laughs> and if they'd have had Facebook, that would have went viral. I mean, that would have gone viral right there. That would have been one. Jesus has said that one of his disciples are going to betray him. That would have made Fox News right there. I mean, that would have gone all the way to CNN. That would have been important news. Everybody would have been, who is it? Matter of fact, the disciples were at total oblivious of what's going on. They had no idea. And that's why they begin to talk among themselves. They begin to say things. They were at a loss. Which of them? And actually, the scriptures, if I'm studying this right, actually kind of says they were not saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll bet that's Judas. You know, he... He has the money. I think I saw him take some the other day. That's not what they're saying. Actually, what they're saying, kind of like, who is it? Is, is it me? Do you think? You th who is this? Do y'all know anything what's going on here? They had not even an idea about who it might be. Simon Peter motioned. He, let's get a little picture here. Simon Peter is sitting on this side of the table. Jesus is sitting on this side. Simon has been facing like this. Jesus is facing like this. It's a very narrow table, okay? John would have been right here laying on a couch, probably a foot and a half back from the face of Jesus. Up here is Judas right here. 
only another foot and a half forward. They're very close to each other. Peter is over here, and just knowing Peter, you know he would do this. He said to, to, to John, John, ask him who it is. That's Peter. I mean, Peter's got to know what's going on here. So he says, ask him who it is. I don't think anybody heard that except John. And John then, of course, leans back against Jesus, which would have been very easy. He's on his left elbow. He's eating with his right hand, and he just leans back. And it says there that he, asked, he said, Lord, who is it? He thought he ought to get to know that, I guess. Here's Jesus' answer. I don't think anybody heard this except John. I don't think even Peter saw this. Peter was trying to read lips. But I don't think he understood because later what the scripture says. Jesus answered to him, it is the one that I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it into the dish, which was wine. And when they dipped it in the sop, he would have dripped it all the way over to Judas. And he would have said, Judas, here, I love you. The host is actually making a statement that says you are the most important person at the banquet. And I want to lift you up, Judas. You're the most important person here. Never forget this. There, it is never too late to turn around. Judas did not have to do this. You say, well, it was predestined. No, it was told the, because they, God knows all things. But just because he knows all things didn't make it happen. You know what made it happen? Judas what makes things go wrong in your life <laughs> nobody's to blame brother if you're under the bridge you're under the bridge because you chose to be under the bridge if you're living in sin you chose to live in sin every person has a free will and you are exactly where you've chosen to be and you said that's not true I can prove it after church I ain't got time right now take responsibility for where you're at, in Christ, in the world, with Jesus, wherever you're at, take responsibility. Verse 27, Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Carrot, son of Simon, and his spirit, who is very troubled, is saying to Judas, You are the one I love. I love you. No wonder he said to his disciples just in a moment, love one another. Love one another. Because that's what Jesus was doing right now. Not because he had to, but because that was the heart of the Father. And that's the heart he wants in us. The interesting thing is that not anybody in this group even thought for one moment that Judas was the one. Now that's an amazing thing. That's an amazing thing. As soon as Judas took the bread, though, let's go on with him. Miss something. As Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Very important little thought there. When did Judas get filled with Satan? After he took the bread. Was he before that? I don't think so. I think he had been thinking about it. I think he had a weak area in his mind. Don't you contemplate things before you actually do them? This little thought comes across your mind. This little thought comes across your mind. You kind of think about those things. You kind of brood on those things. You kind of boil on those things. And then finally it explodes on those things, don't it? Now, the truth of it is we have these things in us. And who is looking for the chance to just jump in there? Satan is. That's why, Christians, you have to constantly be keeping your life moving with Jesus. Your brain is a field ready to receive any kind of news you let it have. And so Judas is receiving a statement from Satan right now. He's been thinking about this. He's been contemplating this. He has not totally received Jesus as the Messiah, and he's getting ready to make a big mistake. And it says Satan entered into him, and Jesus then says to him, listen, we're talking about love one another. But Jesus said to him, what you're about to do, what you're about to do, still missing that one. Is it on there? What you're about to do, do quickly. Wow. What Jesus was saying, Judas, we've come to a point. 
you've got to make a decision. You took the sop. You know I love you. I've done all I can do. Now make a decision. That's where you may be this morning. Did you know that's a wonderful place to be? If you make the right decision. I've watched my friends. I've watched family going down the road and make a left turn that takes them right over there in the ditch. And sometimes they convince themselves the ditch is kind of fun. And then later, they want to get out of the ditch. But now they're so far off in the mud, it's going to take a four-wheeler to pull them out. I mean, they can't get out anymore. But they can. They can. Judas could have always changed the direction. I'm so committed to that thought. I believe with all of my heart at any moment, Jesus was saying, don't do it, Judas. Turn around and come back. But what you must do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal, no one at the meal, understood why Jesus said this to him. That's John, Peter, no one. You know what that says? Peter, Jesus never let it out. Never. You know he knew what was going on. He knew the heart of Judas. He never let it out. Did you know that is an incredible ability, isn't it? That we could be a part of a church, all of us here this morning, and we know things about everybody, don't we? But never speak anything but what's good about somebody. And sometime later, somebody said, oh, yeah, he left her. Really? Man, I thought they had one of the best marriages. I mean, you know why? Because the church loved them and spoke well of them and believed in them and cared for them. Yes, they made a wrong decision down the road, and everybody is shocked. It goes viral. I hope that's what you would, <laughs> if Diane and I get a divorce, Diane said she never was going to divorce me. But she has tried to kill me a couple of times. I always try to sleep close to her. She'll wake me up when she's moving. You know what I mean? But no one at the meal understood. Jesus had never let... He had loved... He had loved this son of Simon so well that no one even suspected. Oh, I love that. I just love that speaking well. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought, well, he's going, to, he's going to go buy some stuff for the feast that's coming up. And someone else said, well, no, he's going to go buy something for the poor. Look at the thoughts they're having right now. Look at the thoughts they're having. Nothing condemning Judas, nothing putting him down, but only lifting him up. He's getting ready to go buy things for the feast. He's getting ready to go help some of the poor. That's what he does all the time when Jesus says, you know, you need to go help that family. He goes and does that. Nobody even suspected. But as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out or he made a decision. And it was night. That's an incredible insight from John because at that point, Judas's life changed from light. It is night. And that was not put in there by accident. See, when we don't make the right decision, you start walking in the darkness. He said walk in the light, didn't he? That means walk in the light. That means don't sit down in the light. It's walk in the light. The light is always moving, always taking you forward, always growing. Next steps, always helping you become more like him. He's always got you going. And so when he went out, what had happened? He went out, and now his life is in darkness. It's a sad thing. It's a very sad thing that now he becomes known as a traitor. Now he'll never be the name that a child will use in the world because everybody will label him as someone that betrayed the Son of God. What is the central theme of all of this that just went on in your minds? The central theme is I bring you a new commandment. How many of us need another rule? I mean, God gave us ten and you can't keep them. I can't, of course, but you can't. No, we can't keep the 10. What's one more going to do? It's kind of like the gun laws. Let's make another gun law. <laughs> you, you can't make another gun law. You don't need another gun law. You just need to obey the laws we have. Isn't that right? Why is he giving us another commandment? Because it's not like other commandments. And that's the one thing you need to find out today. This is an important 
rule. This is an important concept, but it's not a concept. It's not a rule. It's an experience that totally changes your life. Now, here is something very important. God is always wanting to bring unity in your life. Many times, you've seen it, divorce happens, and sometimes divorce has to happen. Just can't be changed, seems like. Two parties can't forgive, can't walk out of it, can't seem to get God involved. There's other situations. You have to fire the guy. He won't come to work on time. You know, he's always late. He doesn't do his job. He cheats on the work he does. Hey, finally, you just have to fire him. You can do all you can do to save the person, but finally it has to happen. And so in the truth of this, Jesus says, I've done all I can do. I've reached out as all I can reach out. And now what have I got to have? He says, I've got to have unity. Because what's getting ready to happen is when he was gone, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. Five times he used the word glorified or glorified or glorify. What he's actually saying is God wants to glorify himself and he wants to use you. Jesus said he wants to use me. He wants to glorify me. And as he glorifies me, I'm going to glorify him. God is going to get all the glory. And that's what this is all about. He's saying, I love Judas and I bring glory to God because I loved him without one doubt of love. I loved him with all I had. That's why he's saying, I'm bringing you a new experience, guys. I'm bringing you something that you'll need to stay in Jerusalem until I send you some power. Because when I send you, you're going to need some supernatural power to love the way I'm telling you to love. Incredible statement. The whole universe is about glorifying God. And he so wants us to be a part of that universe glorifying him. And to live that life. How do we live that life? Let's go back to what the sermon is all about. Love one another. By that you will know, they will know that you're my disciples. The only test of the church is not necessarily any certain thing except it's, it's giving or doing out of love. He uses a statement here that's very, very uh, touching. It's, uh, it's kind of mushy, kind of soft, you know. He says, my children. It has never been used in the Gospel of John until now. And at this point, he says to his disciples, my children. What he's saying to them, you're like my kids. And I want to tell you something that I can't tell uh, uh, Judas anymore. I can't tell it. But now that we're all together here, we're unified. L Judas is gone. Let me say something to you children. I will be with you just a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. I think he's talking about the crucifixion. I think he's talking about the burial. Of course, a new commandment I give you. He's telling them right before he leaves, he said, you can't come with me. Where I'm going, you cannot go. You're going to look for me. You're going to think they stole my body. All of these things are going to start happening. But he's saying, listen, Here's something i got to tell you, because within 24 hours, it's all going to be happening. I'm going to be a bloody mess in 24 hours. So you need to get this. A new commandment I'm giving you. Love one another. He had just done it. He had just lived it right before him. You see what I'm saying? There wasn't any doubt what he was talking about. They knew exactly what he was talking about. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, children, if you love one another. How will you deal with the traitor in your life? How will you deal with the person that raises his foot up against you? How will you deal with the person that slanders, talks, belittles, brings you down? Oh, I'll tell you, we'll deal with it just the way we've all been trained by our heaven, no, by our earthly father, Satan. That's what's scary. That we will not deal with it like this. But Dylan, they're just words. Another rule you told us at the very beginning. Another rule is not going to change my heart. There's all of these scripture. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind. You know, these rules are there. There's ten of them already. They don't change your life. But this one is the one that's going to do it. 
This is the one that could change all the crime in America. It could. Matter of fact, when Jesus comes back, this rule will be set up, and it will change the crime in the world. He will rule the earth. And yes, it will be the earth that we all desire today. That sex trafficking would stop. Violent crime would stop. ISIS would stop. That killing of saints would stop. We all want that to end. It'll not end until Jesus comes back. But it can end in your heart. You can, not, you can come to the place that hate is not there. You can come to the place that the power of God in you. Now there's a scripture I want to tie in here. I mean, I want to tie in literally what Jesus is saying here about that scripture. What he's saying is, I have loved you. It, this would be kind of close to what the Greek would kind of say. As I have loved you, as I have loved you, what he's saying is something has transferred here. As I have loved you in order that you might love one another. Do you see a difference there? I love you, so love somebody else. No, I have loved you in order. I have put something, let me explain it this way. Did you know you can take a, just a piece of metal and you can attach to that piece of metal a magnet and just put that magnet on that piece of metal and just go off and forget about it. That piece of metal, just an ugly old piece of metal, over a period of time will be changed. And then you take that magnet off and it will be, that whole old piece of metal is now magnetized. It has become a magnet. You know how it was changed? Because a magnet was attached to it and it stayed attached until it magnetized that piece of metal, totally transformed that metal. It's no longer the same kind of metal. Now it's a magnet also. That's what Jesus is saying. I have loved you in order. I have connected myself to you. I have surrounded you. I have grasped you in my hands. I am now magnetizing you. Now you are going to be a magnet. You are going to go and attach yourself to other people, and you're going to magnetize them. You're going to transform them. See, that's the kind of love he's talking about. It's an experience that magnetizes you, that transforms you. You're just an old, ugly piece of metal. I mean, a beautiful piece of metal. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he attaches himself to you. Isn't that amazing? They can take a guy like me that's grumpy, that's kind of ornery, that's kind of sarcastic, kind of down on people, kind of negative. I mean, a lot of those things are exactly true, and you wouldn't believe it, would you? And he can take that and attach himself to me, and he changed my life. He actually made me unjudgmental. He actually made me love you when you are just critical and bitter and ornery and mean. He's actually helped me love you like that. And, and actually think the best of what God could do with an old grump like you. You know, it's just amazing. I can't believe it. I used to be so judgmental that we had a friend that would come visit Diane and she wore shorts. I told Diane she's going to hell. Yeah. They were long shorts, too. I mean, if you'd have been wearing the ones I wear today, I mean, I don't know what I'd have thought. But, I mean, at that point, listen, I wasn't dealing with sexual problems. I was dealing with legalism. And it's a worse bondage than pornography because it became so judgmental, I could not enjoy people. I judged them. Listen, when God attached himself to me, he magnetized me. He made me into a new creature. He actually changed my life. And I can actually say, you can ask Diane if that's the truth, and I'll guarantee you she'll say, yeah, yeah, he was every bit of that way. She couldn't even wear sleeveless blouses. <laughs> I love sleeveless blouses, but I didn't then. See, I was so judgmental. Listen, Simon Peter said, where are you going, Jesus? That's just like Simon. Where are you going? Jesus said, you know, you can't go with me now. Later you'll follow. Let me make a long story really quick. Jesus actually said to him, you can't go with me now, but someday you'll follow. Probably 30 years later, he's probably a man now close to 60 years of age. He's in a Roman prison. They lead old Simon Peter out to be crucified. I mean, to be crucified, yeah. And he looks at him, and the story actually kind of goes, and we don't know actually, of course, how all of that pans out in his life but he actually said to him and this they do know he said I, I can't be baptized like my savior 
I can't be crucified, <laughs> thank you. Well, anyway, it's about the same thing. Right? You're supposed to die. Yeah. He said, I can't be crucified, which is not baptism. I can't be crucified like my Savior. He said, you've got to turn me upside down. See, Jesus said, someday, Peter, you will follow. You will follow, but you can't right now. Because you're not even ready right now. You can't follow me right now, Peter, because guess what? Tonight you're going to, you're going to deny me three times. You have not been magnetized, Peter. You have not been changed. You have not experienced. You just have a belief, and I'm making you into a son of God, but you're not quite there. You're not ready to follow me. So what I'm saying to you as we close, please, with all of your heart, you have got to accept the Lord of glory, whoever you are, and let him attach himself to you day and night. Everywhere you go, he's got to attach himself to you until finally he changes you into the person you're supposed to be. Wouldn't that be nice? That we're all filled with love like Jesus? That we all cared for people like Jesus did? Listen, that would change the world, wouldn't it? Listen, we wouldn't be out there trying to say, don't kill your baby. We'd be out there saying to them, hey, if you need any help, we'll help you take care of the baby. Yes, we would. We wouldn't be out there judging the drug addicts. We would be out there saying, let me help you. Let me pray with you. Let me help you move forward in your life. We wouldn't be trying to, you know, get mad at the guy pulling on the freeway and almost running over you. You'd be saying, hey, I'll back up. You can go in. I will be a part of bringing love and peace and joy to the world. You know why we're not doing that? We hadn't been magnetized enough yet. And it's only you that can make that decision. Nobody else can make that decision but you. Let me give you three points for how we would close this service. You can have a Judas spirit. Many of us have a lot more Judas in us than we think. Don't ask your wife, don't ask your husband, it's true. Many of us have a lot more Judas in us than we think. Many of us are a lot like him. You must deal with that Judas spirit. If you want unity in your life, if you want peace in your life, you must deal with that. You must not allow yourself to choose to be used by Satan. Anytime he comes and starts talking to you, remember this. You have believed in Jesus Christ. And he is now making you into a son and daughter of God. So all you do when he says do this, you say, no, I'm not going to do it. And you know what? Then the Spirit of God will come and He'll strengthen you and you will go forward. Number one, get rid of the Judas spirit. Ask God to reveal it and show you and get rid of it. Number two, as I have loved you, you need the Spirit of Jesus. You have to invite the Spirit of Jesus. He comes into your life. He's making you the Son of God. He's magnetizing you. But you have to constantly continue. You never quit choosing Jesus. You never quit. So anytime in life as you go along and you begin to look at people, you have to say, Jesus, I want to love them as you have loved me. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to love them. Did you know that's a lot more fun? Did you know that? Heck of a lot more fun. Not loving people is kind of, I don't know. It's kind of fun up here, but it kind of hurts down here. I mean, it just kind of leaves you dry and dull and mean and ornery and hateful and bitter and you know, who wants to live like that? A lot of people do. You may be one of them. Number three, launch 16 is trying to get you to start going forward. So as you go forward, you're going to have to do, because you have freedom, and as long as you're alive on this earth, do not feel you're sanctified holy forever. You're only sanctified for the moment. You only sanctify this moment. Lord, I made the right decision. And as you move on, Satan is saying, okay, I'll come back at a more convenient season. <laughs> and that more convenient season, when you and your wife are having this knockdown drag out, and you're ready to just say something really mean, sit down for a moment and choose to love as Jesus loved. When your boss comes on your case, sit down for a moment and choose to love as Jesus loved. Choose to think the best. It is not an easy thing. 
It is not. I started out by saying, do you find it easy to love people for a long period of time? As a whole, we do not. We do not. That's why, as you are the church, you are filled with the Spirit of God so you can go forth and do and be what nobody else can be because you have Jesus. You have Jesus. And Jesus said, I give you another commandment. Not because it's a commandment. I give you something that you're experiencing, you're seeing right now, Jesus says. What you're seeing me do is because the Father is in me. And I do exactly what the Father does. Now, now guys, go do it. Would you stand with me? And I just want to pray for you in closing. I know some of you just can't get out there quick enough to go witness to the waiter, the waitress. You just can't.